over um, a, what we thought was a really good team, and, and today kind of bared that out. Um, just Coach Madelon's team, you watch them on film, um, they've looked outstanding, 44 goals in, in two games. Uh, but if you go back to 2020, and I know some parts have changed, um, but the last seven, they've averaged 19 goals a game. So they've beaten some really good teams. And, and a lot of the guys are back, um, you know, maybe a few here and there. Uh, but a lot of those parts are, 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 are pretty talented parts, as we saw today. Um, obviously, you know, did a good job in the middle of the field, whether it was you know, Luke or the wing guys or just some of the loose balls. I think the ground ball play was 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 pretty good. And when you look at the stats, that bears it out. Um, just would have loved to have kind of taken some of those and, and produce more goals. But you kind of have to give their goalie credit. I thought he was outstanding. Um, he was good on film and he was good today. So happy to get a win. Um, certainly a lot to work on, but a lot to be proud of with this group. Um, just continuing to share the ball on offense and playing together defensively. Question? I'm Wayne Viner from Viner Four Gates. We make your company work. I'm Arthur Smith with Viner Four Gates. Two-factor authentication is a must-have in today's world. Security training for your company is a must. The crooks are getting smarter. We have to give you the edge to fight back. Yeah, Coach, first of all, congrats. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the disparity in a couple of things that you have to score. It was a close game. I mean, ground balls 42 to 20, shots 50 to 23. The numbers don't tell the story of the game. Where where was the offense? Was the offense lacking in any way? Um, I think you look at, you know, the, the overall game, we, you know, the goalie has 19 saves, so you're getting 11 possessions back, right? So. That's 11 times you're going to get back. And then there were times where we did back up the goal or, um, you know, some silly plays where, um, you know, we come down, Luke has a, a break on a faceoff and, you know, he's, he tries to throw it to Eric and Eric's actually going to back it up because he thinks mm -hmm. Luke's shooting it. Um, so, uh, again, all those extra possessions that you got, we kind of at times gave away. Um, again, sometimes due to them. So... Even on some of Luke's face-off wins, um, we felt like there were a few that if we had just scooped the ball a little bit better, we could have turned those into possession. So um, all stuff that early in the year, um, you know, some stuff is just going to happen. And uh, we're big on just learning from experience and not dwelling on it um, and, and just growing from it. And this group has been very determined. So um, we'll, we'll, go, we'll get back and look at the film Monday and go over some things. And I'm sure these guys will, you know, they're, they're pretty dedicated. So anything that we didn't do well, they're, they'll prideful, they'll improve it. Uh, Coach, um, they only get three assists. They get three or four goals, kind of on broken, kind of like broken defensive plays, right? Uh, talk about the, the job your defense did, just really keeping them out of the middle of the field um, and, and really, really containing that offense. Yeah, they, uh, Jimmy Mitchell, who's their offense coordinator, does a really good job with them. Um, and they are really disciplined. They have a good sense of who they want to be. And if you, you listen to anything in the preseason, um, they kind of talked about, you know, just, you know, sure, they don't have sours, but we're going to share the ball and keep it hot. And, um, you know, through ball movement and, and just movement, we're going to attack and, um, you know, pick their opportunities. And, and they usually will throw pr six pretty good players out there. So with only four poles, they're going to, you know, get you in and then move the ball to the backside, attack approaches. Uh, and I thought a couple times early, we're just a little late on, on a couple, uh, but give them credit. I thought English was great today. Um, and I just felt like as the game went on, we got a little bit better with some of our slide decisions. Um, and again, I thought Coach Bernhardt did a good job of preparing them, um, and, and our scout team did an awesome job of trying to replicate some of what they did um, to get us ready. Um, so um, certainly, I think will be a lot of that'll be a lot of value to us because there are some teams that play like them, where they're playing five guys above the ball and everybody's moving and they're sharing the ball and they change the field a lot. So um, that'll help some of our guys going forward. Uh, for Jonathan Donville. Uh, how has this been working out so far for you at Maryland? And what did you today that was any different but that got you to become the focus of the offense there uh, in the second half? Yeah, I don't, I mean, obviously it's, it's uh, going really well right now and it's fun to be, uh, be a part of this offense. And the reason why it's so fun to play on this offense is, you know, on any given day, it, the offense looks a little bit different. It's all about how they're playing it. And, you know, a couple times they're maybe a little slower to go to me and, you know, 
dodging is not usually my game, but you know, if, if the time calls for it, you gotta go. And then I was just trying to, when I was there, just trying to get to the goal as best I could, and um, got a few uh, few breaks to go my way. But you know, it's it's fun to play in this offense because on any given day, anyone can uh, can can have a big day, and and today was I'm lucky enough to be my day. Uh, also for Jonathan, uh, you scored the first goal all three home games. Um, you think there's any reason for that, or is it just right guy, right place? I think it's just r lucky, uh, but I'll take it, obviously. Um, no, I mean, it's uh, uh, just trying to be ready to play at the start of the game and excited, but, um, you know, everyone on our offense is ready to play and excited, so I think it's just, you know, luck of the draw, and uh, yeah. Do you think it changes your perspective any to be in sports journalism and playing at the same time? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think I think it's cool to be around it, mm -hmm. and it's cool to be see the different sides of it. Um, but there's nothing like playing, and you know, I didn't get to play for a long time, and you know, this year more than any year, I'm always grateful to, to play and grateful for the opportunities, grateful for my family uh, who helped me get here and, and everyone who helped me kind of grow up in this game uh, but you know after losing last year just so grateful to be back on the field and competing and and that's uh that's something you never get back and something I'll never take for granted. Coach we've talked a lot about what preparing and impact on defense so far this season there was a couple times today where on offense he kind of just like looked like he was settling things down what did his poise do for you guys as an offense today? Uh, yeah I mean you know talking to coach Madelon and coach Mitchell after they talked about just their, the experience that we have. And, and I think at times it showed that that game got a little frantic at times. Um, and then having some older guys like these two, um, knowing, you know, hey, okay, maybe it's getting a little bit like reckless right now. Let, let's just kind of catch our breath here. And I thought our, our guys showed a lot of poise in the fourth quarter. Uh, but there were some times where we cleared the ball. Um, you know, we wanted to get the right guys on. It, it, it started feeling a little bit like Syracuse in the second quarter. We just played a lot of defense. We had quick possessions. Um, so it kind of felt like that all over again um, at times. So, you know, our older guys kind of knowing that and reflecting back again, that was the beauty of last week's experience was, hey, okay, let's just make sure that if we feel like the, the possession time's flipping, Let's make sure we get our guys on, and because we, we do like to attack early, we do like to you know kind of probe in some of the the subbing games and things like that. But then there are other times where it's like you know what, let's just get our guys on, uh, let's get a flow again, and and, and work some offense, um, and just get a rhythm again. Because sometimes it's hard to get that back if you haven't done it for a while. So, but it was great. Um, even late, I thought you know we we kind of were able to kill a little bit of clock, knowing we were up, but then get in and work some offense, and that's not always easy to do. John, I was going to ask, um, it looked like at halftime on the face-off play that you all made an adjustment to start involving the wings more as opposed to Luke or Gavin just going out the front door. What, what were you seeing out there, and what was the adjustments you guys were making? I mean, first and foremost, it comes down to our face-off guys. They're doing a great job. They're winning a clam. And what they're doing with it after is even better. So, yeah, we saw that they like to collapse and try to crowd Luke or uh, Gavin when they win the faceoff. So kind of holding them off, giving them the space to work. So that was the main adjustment for them. And if they wanted to pop it to us maybe and they saw there was some open space, we'd let them know. And from there, it's just a read for them. So either holding them off or making a play on the ball. And they're just making great reads, and we trust them a lot. Uh, Coach, uh yeah, those guys, I think there are a couple of things, you know, with the way we play, you know, it, we usually are sharing the ball, but I think there are some guys that are just kind of naturally, you know, going to find good seams and, and have good instincts for cutting at the right time. And I think their teammates know. Um, and I think both those guys, they're, they're obviously very good passers, but um, I do think they're like our, our guys know if they have the ball and we're spinning and things are, guys are kind of moving on defense, those guys are guys they trust and they look for, um, and they're pretty opportunistic. And then even with, a, with John, there are a couple times where, you know, like he got a good crease and a little bit of angle and they were late to slide and you know you hope that happens you know and it was great to see him aggressive and make that play and um, you know we're very comfortable with him making that decision. Last one for 
you had John, uh, sometime in the first half, or it was the third quarter, I think, you got trapped, you got on defense, all right? And it looked like they were trying to isolate you and you put it to sleep. How much do you enjoy playing defense when you have to be, because I know that's in your uh, DNA? Yeah, I mean, it goes back to, you know, growing up playing box, playing on both sides of the field, and then, uh, you know, really just here, we, we play a lot of defense, the offensive able to play a lot of defense in practice every day, so it is a nice sense of confidence, and then, you know, when you're an offensive midfielder stuck on defense, you know it's, the play is probably coming to you, so, um, yeah, you're just trying to, trying to do the best you can, and, and you know, kind of limit the damage as best you can, and then, you know, obviously it was nice to, to get one in transition there off the, the, the defensive stand, but it just goes back to us playing in practice every day and being comfortable back there and, and, and knowing, you know, what they want to do offensively and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think it just helps you kind of calm down back there and, and settle in. Coach, do we all get too critical sometimes because <clears throat> your, the record of the team is like insane in the past three seasons versus wins and losses? And sometimes you look at a game, well, we didn't do this, we didn't do that, but the W was there. At the end of the day, that's the bottom line. Oh, yeah, I think, you know, be the best is, is kind of like the, the, the whole saying we live by on and off the field. So there's always this, you're kind of, I think successful people in general, too, are never satisfied. Even if, you know, like things go well, you're always wondering, could I be a little better? Can I move the needle? Where can I improve? Um, and I think if you have that growth mindset, like, Regardless of what you're doing, um, you're always kind of looking to move the needle. So uh, with us, we know what's ahead of us and we know the season is a long journey. Um, so I'm happy for our guys because getting a win and enjoying that over the next two days is, you know, it's something that we don't take for granted. I think John used the word grateful and uh, I'm certainly grateful to be with these guys, but I'm grateful that these guys can enjoy the next couple of days. But I think you, you, if you don't continue to try to correct and improve, people look at what you didn't do well um, and they'll take advantage of it. So you have to clean some things up and you have to address it. Um, you know, because we'll look at, you know, next week we'll look at the Notre Dame film and we'll start looking at what they're doing. Um, and if you don't take the time to fix it, uh, people are just going to keep doing it. So I think we have a good team. I think we have a lot of potential. I don't think any of these guys would say we're, we're there yet. Um, but it's fun to try to see, you know, the improvement. It's fun seeing each guy get better. It's fun seeing guys like a, a Luke score a couple mm -hmm. goals today. Um, you know, so it's mm -hmm. fun seeing the improvement in an Ajax. You know, he's doing such a great mm -hmm. job, and um, he's grown so much in two years. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the fun part of it. And we have other guys like Jack Brennan and Jack Chorus that are doing really well. So um, it's super cool, and hopefully we can just kind of stay hungry and keep going. I think, obviously, the way last year ended, we know like you know we can't be satisfied just four weeks in but hey it's their college kids they should enjoy how hard they worked and how much everybody put into it this week um, and celebrate together because this was definitely a team win and a bunch of guys that busted their butts all week in practice so go celebrate together that's one of the best things you can do as a team in college coach can we put a behind the scenes guy on the spot here <laughs> keith last time for keith uh with us here in the room if you don't mind let's embarrass him any, any funny behind the story, behind the scenes stories for Keith? Anything you want to say about, about Keith as he gets ready to head out west? Well, there was one time Don had to bail him out of jail um, <laughs> preseason. Um, and luckily, John was able to come through and take care of him. Um, now, it, you know, we're it, being in this business, you just know, like, unfortunately, like, you're going to meet amazing people. And, and Keith's been one of them. He's a real pro, um, he does everything like really well he has to put up with me which is hard um, but the the nature of getting to where you want to get to usually means jumping from one organization to another right it just doesn't always work in that same organization and i know keith loves maryland and loves this group i know our guys love them i, I know i'm going to miss them uh, but i also you know when you care about people you want them to to go where they want to go and you're happy for him. You don't want to be selfish, just wanting him to say so. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the best compliment I can pay somebody. Mm -hmm. And uh, the great thing about Maryland and this program is, like, you know, it's always not goodbye and see you later. Mm -hmm. And once you're part of it, you're part of it forever. Um, and we do really look at it that way because mm -hmm. he's put so much time and effort into it. Um, you know, I'm thankful he just makes all of us look so much better. Um, and, you know, tough, big shoes to fill. But uh, you know what? I think. Uh, 
um, you know, the people out in Vegas are going to be really excited about the guy they get. And, um, you know, I'm sure somebody will jump up at Camp Phil's shoes, much like Phil and Jared's shoes right away. But um, I'm sure we'll have another young guy that Keith will help, and eventually we'll get there too. All right, we're done. <laughs> well, John, you get three meals now next year when you're out. Yep, perfect. So I've got Keith out there. Keith out there.